Hey everybody, Kuroda here. How's it going? Um, welcome back to my Let's Get Real series. This is, for those who don't know, my series where I just kind of talk about more in-depth and personal topics or more, you know, long-form conversation kind of things when I have guests and whatnot. So it's just basically like a longer, more, you know, in-depth discussion with you guys. So for today's video, as you guys can see by the title, I wanted to talk about something that has always been kind of a struggle for me, and that's self-esteem. Now, I know there's a lot of you guys who are younger uh, who watch my channel. So, I mean, first of all, I'm not gonna like, you know, at all claim that I'm some kind of expert. You know, I'm I'm not like a, um, I'm not a you know a counselor. I'm not like you know trained in like the mental health field and all that because I know those are elements of, you know discussing self-esteem so I'm not a professional is what I'm saying but I thought maybe that I could give sort of at least my story and my perspective on the whole idea of self-esteem um, I will say that my wife as you guys know is a counselor so <laughs> I'm ex I'm uh, I've learned quite a bit from her and on my own too but I'm just not a professional so I just want to put that out there but yeah so self-esteem so again like I said there's a lot of you guys who are younger and um, there's a lot of you guys who I'm sure are going through stuff, uh, especially, you know, if you're teenagers, because I certainly did, everybody does, it seems. It's just the cliche, I guess, of, uh, you know, going through puberty and going through um, high school and all these, like, difficult challenges, and sometimes you have issues with family and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So self-esteem is something that I had never really thought of too much before when I was a kid, so... Um, now things were a little bit different when I was a kid when I was a teenager you know the internet was around but it's nothing like it is today it wasn't like you know how social media has dominated everything and everybody has social media you know everybody has somebody's got like you, you either have like a Facebook or a Twitter or a snapchat or Instagram or some kind of social media so people do have a good way of communicating and people do have access to a lot of information which we did when I was a kid too but you know it was more, you know, in terms of the social media side of things, it was a lot different. Like, I was part of, like, a forum, uh, several forums, actually. But even so, back then, they were kind of niche. It wasn't like a mainstream. Uh, it wasn't until really MySpace came along that um, social media became a really big thing. And that wasn't until I was in, like, late high school. So, And even then, it wasn't like, you know, most of the drama <laughs> that happened was uh, on AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> for me or MSN Messenger if any of you guys watching this are old enough to remember that as well but uh, my point being is that you know a lot of what today uh, happens to a person and what shapes a person's self-esteem um, has a lot to do with social media and of course it also has to do with um, you know your experiences with people in school and things like your upbringing and all that and there's a sort of like idea of like having, um, you know, I'm taking a communications class for school right now and they're talking about this idea of self-concept and it's the idea of what you yourself, like what your perception of yourself sort of is. And it's interesting how the way that you experience things and the way the, and um, the things that you go through in life and the way that people interact with you and the way even things people say to you or even like specific events can really help shape your self-concept and um you know this kind of got me thinking a lot about it um and it's it's interesting because I think a lot of people and especially myself I can definitely get wrapped up in things that people say and I like to say and I've always said that I don't care what other people think and I do I think that is true to a certain extent um, I am who I am you know I mean I you know if I care what people think I wouldn't have a uh, giant wall of amiibo or you know I wouldn't you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's not necessarily a mature uh, sorry for the camera it's not necessarily a mature um, thing for a 30 year old to be doing and having a uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not judging, I'm just saying some people might perceive that it might not be a mature thing for a 30-year-old uh, a to have a very large collection of uh, figures and uh, plushies and um, uh, obviously you guys know I have like a lot of uh, the Jurassic World dinos and stuff. So, um, you know, there's, 
it's like of course stuff like that it's like i don't care i like what i like i don't care what people are gonna say about it but there is certain other things that i think everybody um kind of let's get to them you know and it could be something as simple as like you know somebody telling you that you're you don't know how to do this right you know and you might be like uh you know your initial um reaction might be like ah screw you i don't i don't really care if you don't think um what i'm is doing what i'm doing is right and you might brush it off but it might subconsciously or even consciously come back to you and you might think like oh man maybe i don't know how to do this right like say you're working your job or say say you're at school and somebody tells you ah you suck at math or something and then you might be thinking like oh crap i do suck at math and then it makes it more difficult for you to um to actually you know perform in your math class so uh what i'm trying to get at here is that sometimes people uh, the way the things people say to us and the way we perceive others well the way we believe others perceive us can really affect us in a lot of ways and uh you know this is something self-esteem has been, always been something that i've really strug struggled with a lot um especially as a teenager i've gotten better at it over time for sure um but it was always something that I oh, that I constantly struggled with. Now, if nobody w when I was a teenager, when I was a kid, nobody was like knocking you, knocking my head around, going like, "Hey, uh, you know, you should be more confident. You know, you should be blah 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 blah." There wasn't really too much of that instilled in me, you know. And um, you know, maybe it w maybe I'm I to my not to my memory, maybe there were people who were doing that and were doing it in just a different way. But it was never something that I felt people really hammered into me and I kind of wish people had because um, I think it would have really helped me in the long run now I definitely sh have struggled with self-confidence issues my entire life my entire adult life as well and um, you know some of you guys who know me on uh, the channel or and who, who don't know me quite as personally might not may, might not think that might be like well he seems pretty fairly confident you know I you know talk about the channel I'm usually you know, pretty excited about things going on on the channel. And I feel pretty sure of myself in terms of like, you know, I, I try to stay positive in the channel and uh, about the channel, all that stuff. But there's a lot of stuff personally that I don't, you know, feel very confident about. And, um, you know, this is something that I often think about. And there's this is something that there's some times where I can really fight it and brush it off. And there's some times where I and I'm sure some of you guys know by you who have experienced this that you know, sometimes you just can't help but let your, um, uh, let the feeling of being self-conscious about yourself really cripple you in what you're trying to do. It's happened to me before. It's made, uh, sometimes for me, it's like I want to do something. I feel like I just can't do it and I don't feel like I'm good enough to do it and all that stuff. And it just destroys me and I just can't do it. And I physically, like, it just, it, it takes a toll where I just, I can't even take the first step. Which is funny, because often if I take the first step, step, I'm okay once I get going. But sometimes just taking that first step is the most difficult thing. And in order to do that, my confidence level needs to be good. I need to feel good about myself. I feel like I need to feel like I'm capable of at least putting, you know, a foot forward. Or at least feeling like it is something that I can do. You know, I know I realize I'm speaking in kind of vague terms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you, you I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, in general, um, it's sort of like a... It's sort of just how I operate. Now, I know everybody's different. There are some people who are actually really confident in themselves. But even those people, you know, in terms of confidence, you know, I'm sure there's... We all have it. We all have these things that we feel self-conscious about. And we, we put up walls in different ways. Some people, like me, kind of withdraw and just kind of shut down. Some people um, get angry. <laughs> some, you know, everybody has their own way of, of dealing with it. So, I don't know. I, it's just something I really want to to uh to bring up is this idea of self-confidence and now what i often try to do and i want to do another video with this hopefully with rachel she's talked about this uh, uh and i want to call that video the power of positivity and negativity because i think positivity and negativity uh specifically when you know talking about yourself and talking about um what it is that you want to do and your mindset and all those things and your perception of yourself i really think that um positivity has a really good place in that. Uh, for me personally, positivity helps a lot. Sometimes it doesn't help all the time. There's times where I'm really feeling crappy about myself one day and I just can't 
break through that wall. But then there's also a lot of times where it works. You know, if I just say to myself, hey, this is good. You know, you're good at this. You're good at this. You know, people like you because of this. You know, if I just try to put a positive spin on things, um, it it actually helps my self-confidence. Um, now, I don't have like any kind of weird, you know, I don't have any kind of PSA or anything that I can say <laughs> about what you can do um, in terms of uh, like any concrete thing you can do to improve your self-confidence. But uh, for me personally, um, like I said, trying to be more, have, trying to have a more positive outlook certainly helps. Um, and also trying to, the difficult thing, the really difficult thing for me, but I still try to do it is the things that you feel most self-conscious about address them. That is the, th that is the most difficult thing. Like for me, like I feel some, for example, um, I feel self-conscious about, uh, sometimes socially, you know, you know, when I was a kid, I was very, very introverted. I was, well, I'm still introverted, but I was very, very, very shy, very quiet. Um, the first like three years or so of school, I didn't say anything in class. Like I was, I was, you know, I wouldn't say I had selected mutism, but I was very quiet. Like I very, very rarely, I'd speak like once, once the whole day maybe. And I often just wanted to be left alone. I was very, very quiet and very shy. And I didn't break that until about fourth grade because I had a really good teacher and I um, had a fr finally had a friend who I could talk to every day and we would, we would hang out and stuff. And also, he uh, let me borrow a bunch of Super Nintendo games, by the way, but that's a different story. That's how I first played uh, Super Mario Kart. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it wasn't until then that I really had even started to be social with anybody. And, you know, throughout my whole, um, you know, time in school up until high school and uh, all throughout adulthood, I've always been very shy and very uh, socially, um, you know, socially anxious, all those things. And, uh, I think there's a lot of that that I have managed to curtail, uh, especially, you know, being a 30 year old man at this point, I think it's, I've got about like, I would say I'm about 70, 80%, you know, I've put a lot of that past me, but, uh, there's still a lot of times it happens all the time where I just feel socially incompetent and I feel socially like I, like I just withdraw. I don't want to talk to somebody cause I don't know what what to say to them. I don't know how to approach them. Um, there's still situations, certain situations that I have, um, that I get in with people, even people, um, that I know really well and that I love that it's, uh, like I'm very bad with confrontation. I, I, I still, um, have a, uh, have a tendency to run from confrontation rather than to address it. Um, I'm slowly getting better at that as well. Um, but as I think, <laughs> I think as Rachel would attest to, <laughs> it's a bit of a, uh, <laughs> it's been a bit of an uphill climb, but it's something I'm working on, you know, and it's, it's something that I feel, um, you know, it's situations like that, that make me feel self-conscious sometimes, but as difficult it is, as it is for me. And I know for some people, this isn't what, what you're going to want to hear. you you might want to hear, well, like there must be an easier way to do that. The, the best way to do it is to kind of force yourself into situations that make you feel uncomfortable because the only way that you're going to improve and your confidence is going to um, grow in in the situation that you're feeling self-conscious in is if you continue to work on it you know you can't you know if you wanted to play a musical instrument if you wanted to play the guitar you're not gonna get better just sitting there looking at it and sitting there going, man, I wish I was better at the guitar. You're gonna get better by picking it up every day and playing for like a half hour. Um, it's the same with just about anything. Um, um, until you are doing something and you're uh, actively trying to do it to the point where you um, can at least be somewhat consistent with it, you're not gonna get better at improving your skills. So. I know it's difficult, guys, especially for you young guys. I know high school's tough. I hated high school. Um, I had an awful, awful time in high school. I dealt. I uh, was very, again, very quiet. Uh, I was going through a lot personally um, at home, which someday I'll talk about probably on the channel. Um, I don't know if I dealt with... I dealt with maybe a little bit of bullying, not a ton. I got... I most For the most part, I always like found that if people actually took a chance on me and were willing to talk to me, I would, um, 
uh, they would actually like me. But there were quite a few instances where that didn't happen and people just were douchebags, you know. That's just how it is. It's high school, you know. You, it's And it's not just high school, by the way. That that There's people like that <laughs> in adulthood, so that never goes away. So uh, dealing with those kind of people, dealing with your own self-confidence, uh, and, deal, and learning to just kind of not let people... Um, you know, control your own perception of you is really important, especially at an early age, because uh, the earlier you learn how to manage things like that, the more easy things are going to be as an adult. I've, I've struggled a lot in my, my whole 20s. I really struggled a lot with confidence issues. It really crippled me from doing a lot of things. Uh, and But I also think that I've done, you know, especially in the last, rec last few uh uh, recent years, especially, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Rachel for this, but a little to myself and other people as well who, who've been in my life, who've been really um, supportive and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think I've really become very happy with myself. And uh, while I do still struggle uh, with certain things, certain confidence issues, there's no question that my confidence level is much higher than it used to be. And um, I'm actually capable of recognizing the good qualities of myself um, and even the bad qualities, although there's still lots of times, like I said, where I will beat myself up and kind of, you know, tuck away and withdraw and not want to do something and feel crappy about myself that I usually bounce back and eventually, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, uh, work on those things. So I, I think it's really important, um, like I said, to recognize, you know, and you don't want to... You know, confidence is important. You don't want to. You don't want to become full of yourself. You don't want to become arrogant. I understand that. Most people want to be like humble and modest and stuff like that. That's fine. But don't take the direction I took, where it's like humility becomes like you always feeling less. You know, always feeling bad about yourself. Always feeling like you can't do something. Always feeling lesser than other people because that's just not true. You know. You should be, I think people should be realistic with themselves. I think people should realize where, where their strengths are we and weaknesses are. I think people should be proud of uh, what um, their strengths are and continue to, uh, you know, continue to really better themselves through their strengths, but also continue to better themselves through their weaknesses and try to recognize, okay, where am I weak? Where, what can I work on? And, um, you know, work on the things that you're not good at. And... You know, set small goals for yourself. Don't, like, if you're not good at um, being socially, uh, or, you know, being social with people, for example, don't, like, don't be discouraged if you can't, you know, if you have a hard time being social with people, even if you start out. Taking the first step is, like, really, that's a big achievement in itself, right? We tend to focus so much on, like, the things that um, we can't do that all the things that we can do and we do well, we don't recognize. And we just kind of let them go by the wayside. And we like, at least I do this, and we focus on the thing that we can't do. And it's not, it's just not a good self um, concept because it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a balanced perspective because there's plenty of things everybody can do well. And there's plenty of things that, some, that we all can't do well. And, um, you know, it's important to recognize just as much as the... Uh, as the things we can't do, the things that we can do, and celebrate those things, and be proud of ourselves for doing that. There's nothing wrong with being happy with yourself, and being proud of yourself, and being, um, and being confident in yourself. If you start being, um, really, um, uh, arrogant about it, and you start bragging and stuff like that, it's not going to be good, but you're also going to get a lot of, you know, flack from people, because they're going to be tired of hearing about it, you know? <laughs> So there's that point too, but, um, you know, I, I say just try to, you know, for all you guys, especially you young, younger guys, uh, and gals who watch this, um, you know, just look at yourself. Don't be so critical of yourself, but be critical to the point where you recognize what you need, uh, to improve on and you work on it, but don't feel bad about it. It's okay. Everybody's got strengths. Everybody's got weaknesses and, uh, we all go through stuff, man. And, and don't be afraid to talk about, what it is that you're feeling self-conscious about and what you're, um, what you're, uh, you know, and what you're struggling with. Because if you have even one person who you can really truly trust and who's a friend or, you know, if you're, you know, if it's a, 
friend, spouse, wife, um, um, sp friend, spouse, wife, what am I talking about? Friend, spouse, your parents, maybe you have a really good relationship with your parents or whatever, a sibling. If there's somebody you can, um, you can talk to who can help you, that's another thing. You, you don't have to do everything alone. You can, you can work on your confidence. It's, it's other people. In fact, one of the best builders of confidence is having other people tell you that, Hey, you're really good at this. You know, you're really good at drawing. You're really good. You know, you're really good at speaking. You're really good at math. You're really, whatever. The more you can get kind of positive feedback, the better, you know, you don't want blind positive feedback. You don't want everybody telling you like, cause of course the opposite problem exists that everything you do is wonderful and you're the best when that might not be true. But if you don't, you always, you, it, to me in general, and this will be a whole other, let's get real topic. I'm sorry. I'm meandering a little bit through here, but this all applies. The key for me, the key to life has, is always balance. I am very much a, a fan of balance being kind of in the middle of things. Uh, you know, looking at, you know, the pros and cons of both sides of things. And uh, when it comes to being confident and your perception of yourself, balance is key. It's, it's recognizing your faults at the same time, you know, also recognizing your strengths and working on both and, and incremental, incremental victories, incremental victories is important. Don't expect that you can do all, again. I use the guitar example celebrate every little every like little victory you know if you're feeling socially anxious and you can't and you feel like you can't talk to anybody but if that if on your first day you decide i'm going to try to be a bit more you know um uh, i'm going to work on being social a bit more if you even just say hi to one person that you wouldn't have done before that's a victory okay maybe you didn't have a full-on conversation okay maybe you were really nervous and you just couldn't do it that is a little victory then the next day you could say, you could say hi, and then maybe ask them a question about them about themselves, or just bring up some kind of topic. And even if their response is not what you're looking for, even if their response isn't good, don't think about the response itself. Think of, wow, I actually asked, you know, was able to ask them a question. Now I actually talked, you know, did more than just say hi. I was able to do something little, and then just slowly build on that. Again, the guitar example. If you pick up the guitar, don't expect that you can play a Jimi Hendrix solo or you can play the solo to Comfortably Numb, you know? If you can learn a single chord, that's a victory. That's one chord more than you knew. So approach it like that with your self-confidence. Try to, you know, think of like, all right, like I'm not feeling very confident about this thing. I'm going to work on it and then just slowly over time. Because the more incremental victories you have, the better you're going to become overall. And that's, that's the only, that's the only advice I can, in my opinion, uh, give, uh, based upon what I learned. And, and these are all things I've struggled with. There's stuff that I still struggle with, but just on my 30 years on this planet, it's just what I've learned so far and I'm still learning. So, you know, uh, and as far as myself goes, um, you know, again, there's stuff that I am still very self-conscious about. There's a lot of things about myself that I, um, it's in, you know, in certain instances, I'm not happy with, but overall, um, I like myself. I, I really do. And I'm, um, I feel very, uh, I feel very good about myself these days. And, uh, you know, I mean, even though sometimes things are difficult, um, I'm, uh, I feel like I'm doing better and I'm really, really, uh, trying. And I think, uh, I think people see that and I think, and I recognize all the good things that are happening that I'm doing. And um, even when things are really bad, I try to, uh, you know, keep that perspective. So I hope you guys can too. And uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. I appreciate that. I hope um, I didn't ramble too much, but that is the point of this series. So I will hopefully see you guys soon. And uh, thanks. I love you guys. Peace.